Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and they just announced the effects of the Gigantamax moves for all the new starter Pokemon, and I thought that they were actually kind of really interesting. They all have the same effect, right? Um, but before I get into that, uh, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content, because the take that I'm going to um, have on these is completely in regard to their competitive viability. Uh, if you guys are interested in competitive Pokemon and are new to the channel, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, welcome to the channel, learn competitive Pokemon here, that's all I ever do. I need more stuff to do, to be honest, this is like everything I do. But, so if we look at them, um, I'm not going to play the video, but I will scroll through it because I'm not trying to catch a copyright infringement. Um, but here we have GMAX or Laboom, you already know what he looks like, but if we skip forward a bit, uh, they actually do just straight up say what the effect of all of them are. Uh, and that is that they just straight up ignore abilities, if I can find that one frame. I should have actually bookmarked that prior. You know what? I'm going to play it for a second. Don't you dare copyright. Freaking. I'm not. This is not copyright infringement, Game Freak. It's like. It, it's it's somewhere in here. Anyways, they, they basically ignore abilities. Um, you can see in the other trailer, like the one that was posted to the Pokemon channel. Uh, Rillaboom's ability hits a Shed Ninja, meaning that it bypasses uh, Wonder Guard. And we see a uh, G-Max Hydra Snipe, which is the name of Inteleon's move. Uh, it just completely bypasses Storm Drain from Gastrodon. And that's the most important one, to be honest. Gastrodon is seen on a lot of Trick Room Rhyperior teams at the moment, and I doubt Trick Room Rhyperior will stop being viable by the time this update comes out. So. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and talk about each one of these max moves and how well I think it'll function in the metagame. We're going to do them in order of how they release them, uh, at least announcement wise. So it's going to be Rillaboom first, then Cinderace, then Inteleon. I'll just explain what their place in the metagame is currently and how that actually affects their placement in the metagame. Um, so we'll start off with Rillaboom. So his max move is G Max Drum Solo. I would assume that if it's coming off of anything, it would be coming off of Drum Beating or Wood Hammer. Which means it's actually a pretty strong move considering this guy's got 125 base attack. Slap a Jolly or Adamant Nature on that guy and he's already doing tons of damage. If we look at Rillaboom right now usage stat wise, uh, he isn't too frequently used. Uh, he's at he's at 1.25% usage. As you can see his most, um, his most popular move is Fake Out. Uh, followed by Knock Off and then Drum Beating and Wood Hammer. But usually you don't run both of those. You tend to run like High Horsepower or U-Turn in that fourth slot. And he tends to be an Assault Vest user. But he is a very powerful physical Pokemon. He just isn't all that common. His move ignoring abilities isn't all that great, to be honest. I feel like Rillaboom functions much better with Max Overgrowth. And that's purely because uh, Max Overgrowth will give him the Grassy Terrain boost. It'll make it so Ground-type moves do less to his partners, at least Earthquake and Magnitude. And it'll also make it so his Grass-type moves do a lot more damage. The only Pokemon that his ability really applies to are Pokemon with Sap Sipper, like Gudra, which there aren't too many of them in the metagame, it's just Drampa and Gudra, uh, and also Pokemon with Wonder Guard, which there is one of. There is one Pokemon with Wonder Guard. However, I mean, in the future, if we end up getting a new Pokemon with like multi scale, technically he would ignore that. Uh, however, Multi-scale tends to be on flying types, so it's not going to be doing too much damage anyways. So Rillaboom's max move, I'm going to like give it a pretty low rating. I'd say like it's like D tier, if not F tier. I don't think it's that great of a max move. A grass type move ignoring abilities isn't nearly as good as a grass type move setting up grassy terrain. So yeah, I guess that's my take on Rillaboom. He, he's going to be still a decent pick for the game because he's Rillaboom. He's got great stats. You know, like 85 speed, 125 attack, 100 HP, these defenses. He's a great Pokemon. Like, through and through, it's still going to be a great Pokemon. But I would, I feel like it'd be more optimal to run regular Rillaboom rather than uh, Gigantamax Rillaboom. Which, you know, some people will still run Gigantamax Rillaboom because they just want that option. Uh, and they think it looks cool, which I I'm perfectly fine with. But next up, we have Cinderace. So Cinderace uh, currently has, like, one set. Just, like, Jolly, Max Attack. Sometimes they run the Choice Band on it. Um, and it always runs Pyro Ball pretty much. While it does have a chance to miss, being able to throw out a Pyro Ball into a Ferrothorn slot and not taking Flare Blitz, a Recoil, um, 
and not making contact with it to avoid iron barbs is really really good however you still see them run things like court change once in a while since court change can steal screens away from things like lapras and it can take tailwind but it isn't that common of a pokemon if we look at its usage stats um there are plenty of other fire types that people prefer running he isn't even at one percent usage but as you can see life orb agua berry choice band wide lens focus sash generally what you would expect to see on a fast fire type except a guaberry that one's interesting so pyro ball high jump kick u-turn court change occasionally they run gunk shot or sucker punch but it's typically these four moves um yeah like it it actually has a pretty decent max move i guess um but that's only going to be if like heatran gets released so his ability to ignore abilities i guess his max moves um affect where it ignores abilities really only deals with things with flash fire which there are a couple there are a couple pokemon in the game with flash fire um and i mean relevant ones i know this is a long list but uh nine tails typically runs drought you might see flash fire once in a while arcanine it technically only really runs intimidate or justified flash fire is kind of its worst ability um flareon wants to run guts if anything but flash fire is still viable it's not that common of a pokemon though rapidash will typically run flame body chandelure one of the few pokemon one of the few pokemon that you will actually see running flash fire and that's because it's a great way to switch in on things like charizard uh so yeah you're gonna be able to hit chandelure with a really powerful fire move however it is resisted uh colossal steam engine pretty much 100 percent of the time if not flame body and we have sent a scorch which is either flame body or white smoke so because flash fire is such a niche ability um while while it still will be okay thing to have his max move just you know ignoring flash fire because that's all it's gonna ignore it's gonna it doesn't matter for wonder guard because it still hits shed ninja anyways um that's that's cool right but it's not really gonna gain him much since he's just ignoring fire types which already resisted uh once again this is a pokemon that would much rather prefer to run its regular form where it'll set up the sun and boost its fire moves not only that but reduce the power of water moves which will actually help it out quite a bit however i could see one case being made for running uh max cinderace and that's because was it rain teams tend to struggle against grass types and the last thing you want for your rain team to do is set up the sun that just completely ruins everything so if you're going to run any kind of cinderace on a rain team to help you check ferrothorn to help you check um, well, really just Ferrothorn because that's like the only relevant uh, <laughs> grass steel type. Uh, and because there's no like, I mean, a Scavalier. It would help you check a Scavalier, but your rain team already deals with it. So if you want to check Ferrothorn with Cinderace on your rain team, go ahead and run Max Cinderace because you're not going to set up the sun. That's like the only advantage I can see to it, to be honest. But yeah, Cinderace, I rate it slightly higher than Rillaboom considering it, it can at least get a hit off on like Focus Sash Chandelure to break the sash. Uh, I, I would give it like a C. It, it's like a C. Uh, now, Inteleon, I'm going to spoil it now, A+. Plus, A+. Plus. They did an amazing job giving Inteleon this ability. And here's the reason. So, Inteleon um, doesn't really care about having the rain up. Typically, if you're going to max your Inteleon, uh, it's going to be going for things like Max Airstream. Uh, and that's, well, not Max Airstream, but it's going to be going for Max Airstream off of Air Slash, which will boost your team's speed as well as boosting Inteleon's speed. It tends to run um, Snipe Shot to avoid redirection uh so you can hit things like rapirier uh which that's really important because rapirier tends to run gastrodon next to it and it will run dark pulse for just an extra coverage move it doesn't really hit anything in particular i guess it would hit dragapult for super effective damage sorry i guess it would hit dragapult for super effective damage i just like hiccuped in the middle of my sentence um but it also runs hydro cannon now hydro cannon is a really really cool move for Inteleon because Life Orb Hydro Cannon does way too much damage as soon as you Dynamax it because it just it basically just turns into Hydro Cannon with no downsides. It's 150 base power still, and with a Life Orb, it's it's disgusting. Inteleon's speed tier is it's slower than Dragapult, but it's faster than pretty much everything else in the metagame. So it does it's such a powerful Pokemon. Now the thing is, when you Dynamax it, you have to be careful with Gastrodon. That isn't even an issue anymore. If we look at if we look at Inteleon's usage, right? Inteleon. 3% usage, roughly 4%. It it doesn't 
like it isn't the most common Pokemon, but it's definitely a threat. It's faster than non-choice Scarfed or Manitan. Um, it's faster than uh, Charizard. It's faster than a lot of things in this metagame. And being able to throw off those Max Geysers or Max Hydro Snipe now because it doesn't have to, uh, it, it, because it doesn't have to like avoid Dynamaxing so it can deal with Gastrodon. It can just throw those off even more recklessly, and that's so so cool for Inteleon. I honestly feel like Inteleon's gonna be one of the most busted Pokemon in the format because if we look at Storm Drain. Uh, there is like one Pokemon that really runs it. Maractus isn't common at all. Uh, Gastrodon runs it. And Gastrodon takes neutral damage from Storm Drain. So let's do a damage calc real quick. Let's open up the damage calculator. So Inteleon versus Gastrodon. And we'll just go with whatever set they give us. Sure, that. Uh, Gastrodon, give him a life orb. And... For this purpose, we're going to be removing Storm Drain because it's just completely ignored. And we're going to go ahead and give him Hydro Cannon for maximum damage. They don't even have Hydro Cannon on here. So I'm going to change Hydro Pump to the 150 base power that Hydro Cannon is. So Hydro Pump with a Life Orb is already doing um, 79 to 94, or not Hydro Pump, uh, Hydro Cannon is doing roughly 79 to 94% with that Life Orb damage. Like, yeah, maxing it's going to be the same damage, but this is the thing, like, Timid Inteleon has a clean two-shot on Gastrodon, and if it takes any kind of chip damage, it's basically already dead. Not only that, but, like, you don't even have to target the Gastrodon. Once you're Dynamax, Gastrodon isn't a threat to Inteleon, you just have to hit whatever's next to it. I love this. Inteleon ignoring this thing's ability is is so huge it's so cool uh and on top of that like i, I don't know i just i've always i was always a big fan of inteleon um i, I really don't have much more to say about it <laughs> yeah inteleon's a great pokemon guys let me know what you think about these max moves in the comment section down below be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more pokemon content and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching i appreciate all your support have a nice one if i could actually click the end record button